So in this video we're going to reset um, one of the radio codes. Um, in the previous video you saw that I disconnected the radio to put in these pods and then by doing so it's actually put the radio into safe mode which normally you would put in a four digit code um, using these numbers at the side and it would basically give you uh, full access to the radio as it did before. However, um, on my occasion as you can see it says safe and now it says number three so that means that there's been three attempts previous um, to put in the code but the code is wrong and the reason being is that the code that I got with the car which was inside of the actual manual isn't actually the one for this radio so I put it in twice and then I thought you know what's going on so the serial number for this one ends in 188 if you look at the serial number on the side of the car it ends in 733. So that basically means that this four digit code doesn't actually match the radio. And to enter the code, I'll show you it again. So it's 9025. So you push this nine times to get option one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, and four. And then this is a zero, so you push it ten times to get it to loop around again. Two, and five. And then to push the enter is the CD button. So you can see it's went into safe mode, which basically says it's the wrong code. And then because I've already put in three failed attempts, it'll take like five minutes to actually reset in say code number four. So one of the options you can do is you can contact uh, Smart through a Mercedes dealership or a, a, a normal Smart dealership, and they will contact Grundig um, for the radio code. Uh, you'll need the serial number, the VIN number of the car, and proof of ownership, and then they'll also send you the code. It will take like three, four days. Or the other option is that you can take the stereo out, open it up, connect a, a programming tool to the top of the uh, one of the chips, and basically get download the information from the actual chip itself, and then put it into a, like a decoding software, and it'll give you the four-digit code. And that's the option that I'm actually going to go down. Um, so I've already ordered it. It's arrived here from Amazon. We'll go in the house and actually go and do it just now. So it's this inside with the radio. Um, so to basically read the chip, you need a small flat-headed screwdriver, a T8 Torx to remove the uh, screws on the inside of the unit. You need the, the USB reader and uh, ribbon, which attaches to the actual chip itself which uh, I got from eBay and it's called the CH341A programmer and also the test clip and it costs about 10 quid um, and it was next day delivery as well. Um, the other thing that you need to do is you need to download um, drivers onto a computer. So you need uh, this driver here, you need the mini programmer software and you also need the actual decoder tool. So that, what, that software there is the one that actually reads the chip and then you take some information and you transfer it over to here. I'll put the links in the description for those. So to start, you need to get this top cover off. Uh, use a flat-headed screwdriver. Basically lift the cover off these tabs. This one actually came off really easy. Lift it up, remove, and then put that to one side. On the inside, you've got the CD tray. And you've got four screws that you need to remove with the T8 uh, Torx screwdriver. So there's one there at the front, another one there, one here at the back, and another one here at the back as well. So uh, you just basically remove these. Hard to see because there's limited light here. But... And I recommend using a magnetic headed uh, Torx screw because you'll end up losing these in the CD assembly. And that's the last thing you really want because I guarantee it'll go into somewhere that you can't get access to. Got one more after this. Put that to one side. Then you lift this up gently, flick it from the front, flick it to the right, and that reveals in here this ribbon. Uh, if you come in closely, you'll see that there's two tabs here. You basically fold these down and we'll do the other side and that's how they view the camera. Pull that out and then the ribbon just pulls that and that allows you to take the actual whole CD assembly away and gives you access to inside here. So this chip here is actually the one that we're going to be reading and it's got eight contactors, four to each side. So basically we'll use this tool here. You'll There's a red uh, cable, one red cable that, so that indicates 
and that this one needs to be furthest away from this square chip here. So to get it on it can be a little bit fiddly, but it clamps on like so. When it's clamped on, attach to the other end into a USB port on your computer, which I'm struggling to see. And so that's it all connected, and then on the computer, you'll open up this software here, and we need to select some additional settings that is required. So our chip is the EEPROM 24, and we need to select the setting at Mel. And then the one that we need is the 8, so this one here. So we'll just move a little bit closer so it's clearer. So once you've basically got that all connected, you'll then click read. That should read the chip. And the numbers you're looking to write down is these ones here. One zero row. So it's 3F, 0C, 0B, 1E, 0365. So what we'll do, we'll write that down. So it's 3F, 0C, 0B, 1E, 0, 3, and 6. Five. So now we've got that number, we'll shrink that, and we'll get rid of that, and then we open up this here, which is the coder, and in here you select car 200, and then in here you type in your 3F0C0B1E0365, and then you click check my dump, and it's basically saying that the code is... 3516 and that is a code that you physically type in on the unit and it's actually telling me that it's on safe level 4 and um, which it was that you saw at the start of the video so the code is 3516 and that's the one that we need to enter so now we're finished with the laptop basically pull the usb out get the laptop out of the way unclip the clamp then we need to reconnect the ribbon so white side up so it's Slides in like this, and then just push these two tabs in. So that's one side, and the other side, and then drop this in pretty gently. Spin it around, check everything's lined up. Get your screws. There's four of these. So I always try and do corners, things back together, just to ensure there's not any stress and strain. Anything and it also allows you to see if it's sitting straight. I'll screw in, and then it's a case of putting this back on. So you'll notice that there's a raised lip and that actually sits under this fascia. So you put it on top, slide the fascia back, and so it's hinged back, and then just push down, and then just look here to make sure that everything is push back down. So that's now ready to go back in the car. 3516 and we'll go and type that into the car just now. So we're back in the car. We'll connect the cables. Put these ones in. The aerial in at the back. Slide it all back in. And as previous in the house 3516. So, so we'll type it in. So three, five, one, six, and then we'll push CD for, and here we go. The radio's not working because we're inside. That's obviously plugged in and going. So uh, that's a success. And we'll catch up with you on the next video.